um, let's talk about uh, logistics today. And um, uh, and I, I note some some uh, words uh, in your in your story, Catherine, which I think I can address a little bit further on. And um, convenience is increasing, likelihood of privacy declining. You said. Um, uh, and that's something uh, which uh, struck me very much, because that's something um, I want to take you uh, uh, along with in the, w the world of logistics, where we see a change is, uh, is happening. Um, it's all about data nowadays. When we think about logistics, uh, normally I would speak about large seagoing vessels, containers, equipment, keys, uh, uh, truck drivers, infrastructures, uh, uh, but it's all about data. Um, uh, and you said something like unintended uh, consequences and uh, uh, connecting the physical and the digital world. And I think that is something which is happening in logistics as well at this, uh, at this moment. So I will take you alongside uh, uh, the port logistics, the trends, and what we see when we say that we need to take care of the identity of uh, containers, for instance. And we also uh, are talking about our own identities, very important but a container has an identity of itself as well, and uh, we need to pre protect that. And I will give, come with some examples, and also why it's still hard work, what we see in the, the field of logistics. But perhaps first, a little bit about PortBase, the organization for which I work for. I'm responsible for the strategy and innovation department there. And uh, um, PortBase is a daughter company of the Port of Rotterdam and the Port of Amsterdam. Uh, um, well, you see the, the division of the shares. Uh, uh, and what we do is that we build, maintain, exploit what we call the port community system of all Dutch ports and the connected supply chains. Uh, so basically it's an information hub for every organization, public, private, you name it, uh, uh, to share data uh, along the core processes uh, uh, of ports. And I will give some examples of that uh, later on. Um, I think very relevant for this story is uh, we are a not-for-profit organization. Well, there we are very much succeeding it. Uh, uh, that's not really that hard, but uh, uh, it's a public utility, and that whole, all has to do with trust, because data sharing is a little bit scary, especially in logistics. Uh, it's all about the cargo, the cargo flows, the planning, who is next in line, etc. Uh, uh, so we need to be trusted. So we always say that we have one golden rule, besides being not for profit, but we don't, do not own the data. If you send the data to our system and we send a little bit further along the supply chain, it's your decision. So the one who sends it in, being it a shipping line, a terminal, a transporter, customs, they give us the clear order and now you can share it with well, uh, uh, this, uh, these uh, organizations. We don't make the decision. It's all about trust. Um, well, I, I won't uh, go into the, the, the numbers, but just to give you an, an example, uh, a, a few of all kinds of organizations involved in supply chains. Um, like I mentioned, it's public and it's private, uh, but it's national, it's international, it's a large, very large global operating uh, shipping lines, for instance, or forwarders or shippers, importers, exporters, I, I think you know the brands, uh, but also the really small, what we call the mom and dad companies. They own a truck uh, and they have an IT department which consists out of a web browser and Excel. That's it. Oh, and, and a phone, of course. Everybody has a, uh, a smartphone nowadays. Uh, and everything in between. And they need to cooperate somehow in the supply chain. Uh, because not always do they know who is in, their, uh, in the same supply chain. They just do not know. Who is next in line? Don't know. Uh, I'm just having a transport order. I need to pick up this container and bring it uh, all the way to, uh, to Germany, for instance. Uh, I need to pick it up in Rotterdam. Uh, uh, or de deliver the empty container uh, back again in, uh, in Rotterdam, and that's what I know. That's all I know. But for who? Don't know. And who is interested? Do not know. Uh, so how to share data, how to share uh, uh, that identity of that container? Who is entitled to have it? Um, yes, it's working. Uh, Last time I, I used it, they were standing still, but this is a little bit more nice. Um, this is our playing field, so port logistics. And just to tell you a little bit about all the organizations you just saw mentioning on the, on the previous slide. Um, you see the shipping lines, the large shipping lines. We have container vessels sailing on, uh, on a schedule. Uh, 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 they arrive uh, uh, in, in Rotterdam or in Amsterdam, well, 
in, in Holland it's mostly Rotterdam for the containers, um, but also the bulk cargo, uh, the, the crude oils, uh, etc., are being delivered uh, to, the, to the port. Then we have uh, the discharging of the goods or the loading of the goods at the terminal uh, and, of course, the depots for the empty containers. And we have a large quantity of organizations servicing customers uh, by collecting, picking up the goods or delivering the goods uh, from and to the ports. Uh, those are the hinterland organizations, barge, road and rail. Uh, and literally there are thousands of them, large ones and really a large group of small ones. Um, just to give you an example, uh, you could state that 80% of the total volume is being transported by the smaller companies. Okay, uh, well that, that doesn't really make it much easier to, to know with whom to share data with. Only 20% is in the hand of the large companies, the global operating forwarders, or even the shipping lines. They call it carrier haulage, and then the, the shipping line is responsible for the door-to-door -door transport. But that's only 20%. Uh, and that's if you take a, on, a, on a large scale of the volumes of, of containers, if we stick to that market, that's not really that much. Still large numbers, but not that much. Um, and then, of course, we have the, all the internet connection there. We have the importers and the exporters. Um, just a fun fact, 40% um, uh, of the containers you see being shipped by truck on the roads is empty. There's nothing in it. Um, and why is it? Um, a full container enters the port, is being picked up, is being brought to Germany, is being uh, stripped, emptied at the warehouse, and then the order is bring that uh, specific empty container back to the depot, deliver it there. So it's going empty all the way back to the port of Rotterdam. And then someone in Germany wakes up and uh, it's, it's an export. He said, well, I made something and I want to export that specific uh, good. I need an empty container. Where is it? Well, we just brought it back to Rotterdam. Okay, well, just bring it back in and again. Okay, well, we pick it up, all the way empty to Germany, it's being loaded and being transported full to Rotterdam again. What? Empty. Oh, it's, it's air, air. Uh, that identity of that container is not that interest, but <laughs> when it's full. Um, so that's, that's what's happening, and it all has to do with data sharing, and, and who do I re reach out? Because it would be very handy if that exporter knew upfront there's a full container being transported to Germany, it's being emptied, I do not know, need to know what's inside of it, but when it's empty, give me a heads up and bring it to me, that's only a few kilometers, and then full all the way back to Rotterdam again. That would be great, but well, that's still difficult, still difficult. Get to back to that later on. Um, well, what, but what did we do? Um, and there we go. Uh, and don't worry, I'm not a technician, uh, so I won't uh, go into very much details on what's happening here, but we created a infrastructure, a central uh, layer or platform or however you would like to call it, with some uh, robust components in it. Uh, it's all about translating uh, messages because, uh, like I mentioned, we have international, national, a large companies, small companies, and the one talks Edifact, I don't know, hence, who still knows Edifact? <laughs> I've got grey hairs as well, but uh, <laughs> I think it's, it's due to the Edifact that I have grey hairs. Uh, it's a message standard from 1970, something like that. Yeah, it's still, it's still being used, uh, especially by, by large shipping lines. Uh, uh, dreadful. Um, and we have the, the, the small hinterland operator, Excel, browser, Edifact, what? Um, so we made translation components so they can talk to each other. Um, uh, uh, very relevant, and that's, uh, I think that's the main topic of today, identity and access management. Who are you and what is your authorization level? Uh, that's something we uh, uh, organized in that uh, central uh, uh, infrastructure. And of course, also, uh, what did you use? When did you send it in? Who is the owner, uh, etc. And by doing that, and now, this should work. There we go. We have connected the dots. So, just to give an example. A large shipping line, let's say Maersk. Maersk is coming to Rotterdam and he needs to notify the harbour master. Dear harbour master, I'm coming to Rotterdam. Uh, I will be arriving in two weeks at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Well, harbour master gives an approval. It's also a lot of money because in there, in there. Uh, uh, and he gets a number, a visiting number, just uh, like you get a number when you go to do groceries. Um, and with that number, and with this, what we call the bill of lading, the manifest, which is 
a description of all the goods inside of the board, uh, inside of the ship, sorry. Uh, um, they send it to the customs. Dear customs, I'm going to Rotterdam, I've got my clearance, and these are all the documents uh, uh, which belong to the cargo I'm going to deliver in Rotterdam. Um, well, then the customs, of course, does their VAT, because again, it's all about the money. Uh, uh, but they also do some risk profiling. Oh, okay, so what's your previous port of call? Colombia, uh -huh. ding, 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 uh, alarm bells. Uh, or China, then perhaps a little bit less. But they make a selection and they say, well, okay, you're going to bring uh, a few thousands of containers um, and I want to inspect 50, 100, 200, whatever. Uh, so they go into what they we call a customs block. Um, so now the agent, or the shipping line knows, okay, I'm going to deliver it, I've got my permission, uh, uh, and when we arrive and the containers are being discharged, these containers are being blocked. And that's relevant for him to know because he can inform his customer, but it's also relevant for the terminal, because now he knows, ah, when a, uh, a transporter, barge, road, or uh, a rail comes, I know the answer when he says, I want to pick up that container. The answer is no. Uh, because if he does, he gets, well, in, in, in Dutch it's called an UTB, Uitnodiging tot betalen, uh, penalty, uh, from the customs, which is quite, quite high. Um, um, ship enters the port, uh, uh, gets his actual time of arrival, is being discharged, containers are being discharged, and we inform all the transporters, the forwarders, the shippers, etc. So they know, do all know what's coming, uh, and if there are some changes in arrival times or customs block or customs releases, uh, they know they can alter their uh, planning. So uh, we uh, 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 intercepted all the truckers driving to Rotterdam, uh, not knowing if a container is available. They come to the, the terminal premises and there they get the answer, what are you doing here? Why are you here? Uh, the container isn't ready yet, it's not being discharged, or the customs is still busy with it. Um, so you could have done something else instead of driving empty towards Rotterdam. So we connected the dots. So, problem solved, you would say. Um, not quite, not quite, because now the, the, the fun thing begins. Um, yes, we have connected the dots. Yes, we have uh, made it possible for all the actors in the supply chain to share data, even though they do not know upfront who is in your own supply chain. But now uh, uh, we get some uh, shipwrecks, you call it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shipwrecks. Which is, of course, quite dangerous when talking about ships, but okay. Um, the shipwrecks. Um, well, let's start first by uh, the IT maturity of port logistics and all the actors involved. Uh, I mentioned Edifact, and I saw some, some smiling or some grinning. Um, uh, but the IT maturity is very, very low. It's really lagging behind all the developments. Um, it's costly, it's investing, uh, or they have already invested in the 1970s in global uh, skilled uh, uh, systems. Um, so how do we alter it? So is it up to speed with security? Nah. Uh, are all the channels secured? Nah. Uh, so it took us quite some years, and we, we started out in 2000, it took us quite some years to, to finally have all the channels by, by, by which uh, data was uh, uh, supplied to our system to have them secured. FTP secure, HTML secure, etc. It was all very much behind. So that was one thing. Um, Multi-factor authentication, what? Um, we had a fun, th well fun, uh, not really fun, uh, uh, but tell, tell, tell about it, it's a little bit fun. A terminal in Rotterdam, they uh, switched on multi-factor authentication and they uh, immediately got a call from a global operating forward, a global operating, a really large global operating. And they said, well, what did you do? Multi-factor authentication? That means that I have to invest, that all my people who are in planning and sharing data, etc., they need to have some kind of device to, the, we are not going to do that, switch it off. Okay, uh, otherwise we can't do any business more with you. Okay, so there you see that we are being driven by the weakest link. That's, that's what's really happening. Uh, I don't know, do I have still time? Five minutes, oh, okay. Um, um, so th that's what happened. So, so we are still encountering th those kind of uh, problems. And I think one thing is of particular of interest, and then I'm, I'm clicking it one bit further, um, because like I mentioned in the, uh, in the advanced, uh, in, the, in the, uh, the first slide, it's all about sharing data. So here we have the process, and now we want to liberate the data so that 
uh, uh, companies can build their own uh, uh, supply chain management dashboards or their control towers or even, I don't know if I can mention the word here, blockchain applications. Don't see the real value in it yet, but okay. Um, but we need to share that, that data. We, set, we need to set it loose. So and there we need to really know upfront, are you allowed to, to gain access to the identity of the container? Because the container as such is not that relevant. It's just a box and there's a number and that's it. But what's inside of that container, that's of interest. Um, you can imagine huh, like uh, clothes being, uh, being transported or shoes being transported in containers. Well, that's okay, there's value in it. But also the, the devices and the cars and the bikes and etc. they are being transported as well. And those are of extreme interest. And now there's something which is called in the, uh, 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 in the port logistics, and that's a really hot topic, that's the PIN code. The PIN code. You need to have a PIN code to pick up a container at a terminal. Just, just like when you, you make a, a transaction, you, you type in your PIN code. You need to have to, to do that as well for collecting a uh, container. The PIN code uh, that's being emailed or being faxed even. <laughs> being faxed. Um, because, uh, well, a company gets a transport order, I want you to pick up this container. Okay, I'm going to pick up that container. Uh, and here you have the PIN code. When you arrive at the terminal, you need to key in and then you get access and you can get the container. Ah, okay. Thanks. Uh, but tomorrow I'm not able. You know what? I'm going to hire another trucking company. I will send him the PIN code so he can do it. And it's being sent around, sent around, sent around, sent around. And all of a sudden, that PIN code is out in the open. The identity of that specific container is out in the open. You can imagine what happens. The container is being picked up by someone. Uh, the container is being uh, uh, found again. But what was inside of it, it's gone. That's what really happened. So that's really worrisome. Um, not to mention all the crime and, and the pressure uh, uh, accompanying it. So that's something which we are now trying to, and I will skip a little bit further on so you have a clear view, trying to solve. Together with the supply chain, we, we started a, uh, a program called Trusted Chain. And basically what we do is that we take out one component here, that's I, uh, the IM uh, uh, component, uh, and we have called it IM Connected. And that really establish who are you, what is your uh, 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 identity, um, so that we can give you access to the source of the information without revealing the, the actual uh, uh, information itself. So the pin code doesn't need to be out in the open anymore. It's somewhere and you can get uh, federated access to it. And if you uh, mandate your authorization to someone else, yours is being retracted uh, and the other one gets access. And it's only being brought up when you arrive at the port and then you can get the access and then you can pick up that container and everything is locked and etc. So that's the, the new way of trying to safeguard the identity of the container and make the supply chain a little bit more safer. I am connected and we're working on it right now. Um, and I think zero minutes left. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Martin. Thank you very much. Uh, oh. yeah. See, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, it was very insightful uh, linking data governance with identity management uh, to make it more efficient and you know to solve your uh, problems. Any questions for Martin? Uh, only not not about Edifact. Be mindful of your, uh, the time, and we can take a couple of questions and move to the next speaker. Oh, good morning, Alice Simsek, Interior Care. Compliments for the graphics, really nice. Thank you. Um, one question. You mentioned in the beginning that you said we don't own the data, but you get the data, you process it, and you distribute it. What's the difference? Yeah, that's a good question. It's almost a legal question, uh, and, and that, those are very interesting uh, talks. Uh, um, when, I, when I talk to our legal advisors, they say, well, indeed, you get the data, you process it, so basically you could argue it's your data. Um, but we said that uh, in, a, in agreement with the market to gain the, the trust we need uh, uh, for companies to, uh, to join in the game of the port community system, uh, there we said, well, uh, we, ju we just don't claim that data ownership. It's, it's not ours. It's your decision with whom to, to share. Um, so legally, we could say, yeah, well, it's our data and we could do with it, with it whatever we like. But to keep the trust, we, we made up this, uh, made up, we, we established this rule. So they are basically deciding to 
to which parties they, they can distribute the data and share it. Yeah. And it's, uh, uh, it was the, 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 the second layer where you saw where all, all the, the dots connected. That, that's what we call the process uh, solution. So there you see that uh, the, the, the shipping line can communicate with the harbor master. So if they take that uh, subscription to that uh, specific service, they know upfront, ah, I'm sending this information and you can send it to the harbor master because that's inside of the pro. But that, that's how we have organized it. Uh, but now with, with the, the, the third layer, with all the data just, or just, uh, being sent or sent around, uh, we need to be a little bit more careful about it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. In the um, example from all the dots connect, uh, connected, so in the scenario where you send a container to Germany and then the exporter would in the future have visibility of an, of an empty container being available, how do you then prevent um, any uh, suspicious goods, let's say, from, from entering that container and then be shipped back to Rotterdam and then shipped off? And, and you mean that we, how do we prevent? Well, I mean, if, if you give your, um, your, your customer essentially in Germany, the exporter, yeah. visibility of, of a container being available. So is there, is there any way that you can prevent or that you foresee that you can prevent uh, them from loading up things that they shouldn't be shipping? Well, with, with the data that you check. And yeah, perhaps, but then the question would be, would that be our role? Um, um, and um, uh, um, yeah, and it, it takes a little bit too long just to, to, to really explain it, but um, uh, the containers are being owned by shipping lines. Uh, I, I believe 80% of them are uh, really owned, and that's why you see all the logos on the, on the containers, and about 20% is, is gray, so it's, it's, it's free. Um, so they decide who uh, is allowed to, to reuse a, an empty container, for instance. Um, but the only the, the fun fact is, is, or the difficult part is, that the uh, uh, the, the equipment department is uh, not always connected to the cargo department of the same shipping line. So they do not know from each other what is the need versus what is the capacity, and that's something we can bring together, uh, and that a forwarder or an, an, an exporter, for instance, can tap into that and say, well, I'm, I'm in Germany, I need an empty container, I want to ship it via your shipping line, uh, do you have a container somewhere in the, in the neighborhood? And we can just uh, try to collect the data or bring it together, federated at the source, uh, 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 and so that the, the, the exporter can get access and can claim or book a specific container. That's what we do. What they store inside of it, what they ship, that's something uh, which is out of our mandate. Uh, um, that's not something we can, uh, we can uh, control. No. Okay, uh, thank you. We, we, we have, okay, we have to keep it brief, please. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll stick around. And then. <laughs> Um, thank you, very very inspiring presentation. Um, I have a trust and identity question. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Sorry for that. Um, I'm really uh, um, interested to learn how you actually onboard your your users, because that must be a global endeavor given the 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 the, the complexity of your operation, basically. Yeah. And that seems to be super complicated to me because you also want to do that with a high level of trust. No. You don't want these weird Colombian guys in your trust chain, right? Yeah, uh, thank God, no, no, uh, true, uh, uh, no offense to Colombia, of course, but that's, uh, that's, yeah. um, um, no, that, that's, that's really difficult. Uh, what we did when we started out in 2000, uh, we already established some kind of identity and access management uh, component where we could store uh, the identities, uh, the users, and etc. cetera. Um, um, also there we saw that the phenomenon of group accounts, so one <laughs> one identity for the entire uh, department. That's something we re quickly rule out. Um, uh, but that, that, that's really a, a, a tough, uh, tough question. Uh, uh, at this moment, we have uh, approximately 5,000 organizations connected to the, uh, to the system. Um, uh, and I think that that transposes to about 17, 18,000 different users on, the, on that system. Uh, and what we do now is that we migrate them to that new setup of the, uh, uh, of the identity and access management uh, tooling. So it, it's a new tool, new regime, new standardization, etc. Uh, and by doing so, we just one by one, we, we push them over into the new uh, regime with the new identities. Um, the consequence of that is that uh, when we said uh, uh, last year we have 5,500 companies, we now have 4,800 companies left by migrating it because there were some accounts 
there, but should be disabled, etc. So uh, that's quite a cleaning up. Uh, and we want to have one main uh, identity of, the, of that organization. And that's, that's a search. Uh, a lot of companies do have local Dutch uh, uh, offices, so that's where we can, can enter, but also uh, offices which are in Germany or all the way overseas, perhaps even in Colombia, I don't know. Don't. Uh, um, uh, that's something I need to look into. Uh, uh, and, and to reach them and to establish, are you really who you are? What is your autograph? Uh, can you can uh, give us a, a copy of your identity? Oh, that's something I should not say, but uh, um, uh, that's, that's quite a, quite a hassle. Uh, so when we started out, we thought, well, that's, that's something we can do in five, six, seven months, uh, more than a year. Uh, and it's still, we're still in the final stage of it. Um, so that's quite a, quite a hassle. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Yeah, thank you. Round of applause for Martin. Thank you.